driving through the yard. Okay. <laughs> I just want to know what that all was about. Good morning, guys. Nathan's up. Andrew got up at the butt crack of dawn. So, you know, he's up making breakfast. It is uh, cloudy. And uh, kind of cool. Kind of cool out here, uh, to say the least. Uh, we're supposed to be getting a pretty good rain coming in from Francine, I think the name of it. Y'all say a prayer for my auntie. Um, her niece passed away and they just had a four week old baby and uh, the niece was only 26 years old. She was, you know, the same age as my son, close to it. My son's 27 and uh, it's devastating to the family. She died all of a sudden. They're saying that, um, you know, that it was a blood clot in her lung. I really honestly don't know a lot of the details. I, I don't know her side of the family that well, but I imagine it's very devastating. And if y'all know my Aunt Connie, she was the one that was on the uh, live show with me a few weeks ago. And her family really needs prayers because I think this was her brother's only child. I don't know what I would do if, if I lost my child like that all of a sudden. And now the dad is going to have to raise that baby by himself. I mean, I'm sure he's got support, but you see what I'm saying? That baby's not going to know her mama. And um, it's just devastating. So please, y'all, pray for my family and for, pray for my Aunt Connie. Because I imagine she's really a hurting right now. And um, she just really needs prayers. You know what I mean? It's a terrible, terrible loss. I, you know, I just, I can't imagine. Anyway, <clears throat> it's cool today. The weather seems pretty good. And it uh, seems like that rain is going to push through. They got a condo last night. I'm excited, y'all. I am so excited. We got it reserved. Every time they try to go in to look for a condo, somebody got it. I mean, within minutes, it was nabbed. And I was just like, are we gonna get, be able to have somewhere to stay that doesn't cost an arm and a leg? But we found it. And I can't wait to video. Um, it is a three bedroom, I think two or three bath. You, it has a humongous public pool, or it's not public, it's, you know, for the community. It has a jacuzzi tub. Of course, Hannah and Amy are getting the master bedroom, and so the jacuzzi tub is in there. So they're just gonna have to fork it over, you know, when the old lady wants to go soak. And uh, we're gonna go to the Women of Joy. Um, and it's gonna be me and Amy, Melissa, and Hannah. And so it should be a lot of fun and then of course we're gonna shop till we drop I'll have over three hundred dollars to spend um, that's including my eats so I got to kind of you know <laughs> I mean it's only two days so I mean I can't spend three hundred dollars in two days well yeah I can <laughs> I can spend a lot more money than that in two days <laughs> but um, it, it plans to be fun, that's for sure. It's just kind of get away, and then you go to church, and it's a conference, and there's going to be my favorite Charles ben Billingsley. If you don't know who Charles Billingsley is, he is on YouTube. Look him up. He's a handsome little guy. I say little guy. He's a big guy. Not, like, big. I mean, he's a handsome guy. I'm in love. They make fun of me every time I go up there because I spruce up for Charles Billingsley. And yes, he's married, so I'm not trying to steal somebody's husband. I'm not Kamala Harris. I'm not a homebreaker. <laughs> I just happen to like him a lot. 
Oh, Lord have mercy. Did I go there? Uh, so yesterday was 9-11, the anniversary of 9-11. And Joe <coughs> got some flack, y'all. Because he, the day before, there was a press conference. They finally let him out of the basement. And he says that, um, you know, he had some important things to do. And then tomorrow he's doing a 9-11. The way that he said it. I mean, it pissed people off major. There's Andrew. <laughs> yeah. He's been up since the butt crack of dawn. <laughs> but anyway, he got a bunch of flack for that. That wasn't the funny part. So, you know, um, they're Pennsylvania, or Pennsylvania, New York is pretty well turning uh, red, y'all. New York is turning red. And New York better realize it, you know, especially these politicians that have controlled New York for years, for years. And, um, so they were all together and Trump showed up, you know, he showed up and Kamala went over there and shook his hand. She was very cordial. It makes you wonder, it makes you wonder why she's being so extra nice to Trump. Does she know that he's probably going to be president and she doesn't want her ass in jail? <laughs> I think I would be nice, too. <laughs> Just saying. So, anyway, um, Trump was nice. He shook Joe's hand. I don't know if he shook Chuck Schumer's hand. And Bloomberg was there. Boy, he looked really shrunk up and small compared to Trump. Standing next to Trump, he was like, Trump was at least a foot and a half taller than him. But they were talking. They've always been good friends, him and Bloomberg. I mean, y'all think about this. All of these people, except Kamala, because he has never met Kamala. But all of the others, he's been friends with them for years. He only stopped being friends with these people when he ran for the Republican Party. They were close friends. I mean, I wouldn't say him and Joe Biden sat out on a beach together or played golf together, but they were cordial. He was in their party. I mean, he was a Democrat. He was one of them for years. You see what I'm saying? So, like, I don't know. It's just like, it was almost like they were all friends all over again, all standing up on that platform. So that wasn't the funniest thing. The funniest thing was the fire station. People in this town are crazy. Just so y'all know. So, <laughs> driving. Um, so he went to the fire station. Trump showed up at that fire station. Got a lot of pictures and stuff like that. People really loved him and everything. So there was a few people left, I guess, after Trump left. And it was a bunch of old timers and a few of their kids and grandkids. Joe shows up wanting to give away presidential seal hats, you know. And this one little old timer that was in there, he had a Trump hat on. And he was just like, okay, you, you're wanting unity. And you're wanting us to get together and get along. Hey, boo-boo. Hey, boo-boo. You're wanting us to get along. You're wanting us to um, basically, you know, unify. Uh, then you put on my hat. If you want me to take one of your hats, then you put on my hat. And Joe, at first, he was a little hesitant about it. And he's like, okay. He stuck it on. And now that picture has went viral. The video has went viral. And uh, a lot of people were saying, because I noticed, I don't know if y'all hadn't noticed, Joe didn't say a word to Kamala at that 9-11 deal. He didn't even look at her. I think Trump is right. He hates her. Would it be ironic 
if somehow that Joe Biden sides up with Trump to defeat Kamala for what she's done to him. I'm just saying. I mean, why else would it? He knew that that was a Trump hat he put on his head. He's not that dumb, is he, guys? Is he that dumb? If he's that dumb that he didn't know that he was putting a Trump hat on, why in the, you know, why in the hell is he running our country? I mean, seriously, why is he running our country if he didn't know he was putting a Trump hat on his head? That man knew he was putting a Trump hat on his head. <clears throat> so, maybe he was giving a signal to Trump, hey, uh, white flag here, you know, white flag, I surrender, I'm, I'm willing to help you out a little bit, Trump. Let's unify, and let's get this bitch from running our country. I think it's a possibility. Huge possibility. I mean, Kennedy left. Dorschwitz, whatever his name is, one of the hugest, biggest commentators for the Democrat Party, he left. Who's to say Joe Biden wouldn't leave? And I think Trump would pardon his son for the favor. Why not? Y'all leave the comments below what y'all think. Uh, I'm not saying that Joe shouldn't be held accountable for all of what he's done. But. But. Uh, I think that if Joe really wanted to prove. That he was. Uh, a true Trumper. Then he needs to go in there and drop all them charges with the DOJ. But see. I don't think it's Joe. I think it's Kamala. You got to understand that she's a former prosecutor and DA. She knows how to work the system of the Justice Department. And she has bragged it up too many times about, you know, uh, Trump and how she knows his type and knows he's a so-called fraud, which he's not. Because if you're going to call Trump a fraud, then you're going to call every single real estate lawyer in the country that inflates properties a fraud. You know, these are trumped up charges that they did, and it's a bunch of crap. And they know it, and they can't prosecute them on it. That's why they're delayed, 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 delayed. Because Alvin Braggs knows that he has nothing. He has nothing. And if he actually was to do this and, to, you know, to actually prosecute Trump over these trumped up charges, he would bankrupt New York. And he would never be able to have a career and uh, the DA ever again in his entire life. And it, it, it would just ruin him. And they know it. The saying, guys, they, they know that this is all crap. 77 years, 78 years, Trump has never been uh, a fraud. He had businesses all over the world. He built New York. Them people know it. If it wasn't for Trump, New York would have been dead. Trump went in there and even after 9-11, he rebuilt New York. That skating rink that y'all enjoy, he built that skating rink. The big Manhattan post office that y'all love, he rebuilt that and, and refurbished it under cost. Trump knows how to build buildings. Okay? He built New York. He would sit there and give loans to black people and black businesses and then rip them up when they would come and pay their loan. 
You enjoy what you're doing? Yeah. He ripped the loan up. He helped a lot of people. There are things that Trump does under the table that the media doesn't show because they want to try to portray Trump as this big, evil human being. And he's probably the, one of the most generous, kindest human beings you'll ever see walk the face of the earth. He will give his last dime to somebody to help them. But he's somehow a fraud. He's somehow this evil, racist human being that you all have, you know, made Trump out to look like. And you caused him to get shot in the head. You know, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous, the lies. The actual rhetoric and lies that have come out of the Democrat Party. But then when Trump defends himself, you know, he's somehow the big bad guy. He's the evil guy. He's the, you know, he's uh, selfish. Have you ever seen a politician that ran for president that didn't take their paycheck? And he won't do it either when he comes president again. He won't take a paycheck. He's going to sit in that office and work for free for his country. Doesn't get said. Mm -mm. Doesn't get said. Now, this whole thing on abortion. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I don't think any part of abortion is... Uh, a good thing it's really not it's not a good thing I, I I think murder is murder to me you're taking another human life because you simply just want to take the human life the, you know whatever the case is now there are instances and circumstances like the health of the mother the health of the baby um, you know when they talk about viability okay I think you're playing God honestly I think you are playing God and you're trying to determine that you know yeah this is your body but that little human being that's inside of you is not your body so you don't want that little human being you don't want to be the so called they, they were going around for a while calling it a ho you're a host like, um, I don't know, aliens, you know? And some of these dumbass people were going out with signs and they're saying that I'm not going to be an alien for this foreign object. And they were very pregnant. I mean, you know, and, and the funny thing is, is these little babies are going to be adults one day or, or teenagers and they're going to go online and they're going to see their parents out there doing this bullshit. You know? Um, I'm all for a woman having a choice. I really am. As a woman, as a mother, an American citizen who has a right to vote in my election, and some people don't. Just saying. They have a lot of room to complain and bitch and moan. Well, I've got kids that are American. That's still not you. <laughs> it's not you. Uh, even their hubby can vote. But they can't not know for a while anyways thank god um but set aside everything set aside everything and constantly want to you know post things and argue with individuals and tell that person as a woman how i feel or i don't feel or how i understand something and i don't understand something and i can guarantee you I completely understand. But Trump took Roe v. Wade and gave it to the states. He took it away from the government. You're wanting to bring it back to the government. How does that make sense? 
Sit and honestly look at it. You're passionate. You believe in a woman's reproductive rights. You believe that her uterus ought to be left alone. Okay. Well, why are you taking it away? Trying to get it codified back to the government for the government to tell you what to do with your body again with Roe v. Wade. Well, it'll be, uh, you know, okay. First of all, you cannot have a Tim Walls America. You're not going to be able to have 50 states come together and agree on this kind of a radical nine-month decision, even after, you know, the act of the afterbirth. Um, abortion, unlimited. It's not going to happen in America. They're not going to agree on that. You will have states that will sue the shit out of the administration that does that. Because there are people that will fundamentally not believe in supporting something like that. And you cannot wipe out half of America because they don't agree with you. And it's not that the people are trying to decide what to do with your body. It is a simple fact of morality. You know, it, 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 it's innocent lives, little bitty babies, and our population is decreasing. You know, you're literally ending the human race. We're supposed to be flourishing and, and, and helping, but slowly, if you look at the chart and look at statistics, Americans are dying. We are literally almost like a genocide. There's a Planned Parenthood on every corner of a poor, poor neighborhood. You don't see them in the rich neighborhoods. Oh no. But they don't offer any solutions. I, I'm all for a woman having a choice. But I, I think she ought to have a choice besides the ultimate. It is a personal, hard decision to do what a woman has to do for the sake of her and her child. But to call it terminology and say that this is a fetus and it's, an, it's not viable when they've had babies to survive out of the womb at 21 weeks and live perfectly fine. You cannot play God. Because how much more viable are you than that little baby? You were born. I mean, it's, it, it's like you try to explain something to someone and it's like they have to be right. Damn it, I gotta be right. It, it don't matter, you know, uh, what you think, how you think. I'm going to quote you anything I want to quote you. Because, damn it, I'm right. And you're wrong. And that's just the way it is. You know, like that, um, oh, that movie I always watch, Matilda. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. Get over it. You know. Screw your feelings. I don't really give a rip about your feelings because I'm passionate about how I feel, about what I feel, and I don't care what you think. And you need to get out of my uterus, bitch. I'm just like, we're not even in the same state. We're not even in the same local. Ew. Ew. Okay. <laughs> I am simply telling you that it will never be Roe v. Wade again. Kamala Harris is a liar when she goes and tells you that she is going to executive order. She can just magically get a pen. Why doesn't she do it now? Her and Joe Biden have the power. Why? If she doesn't need Congress, if she doesn't need anybody to do that for her, she would win a lot of votes. She would probably win herself the presidency if she sat there and um, executive ordered Roe v. Wade back into law 
and made abortion legal across the board. A Tim Walls, a, get this, a Tim Walls executive order. She can't. This is what Trump was calling her out on. Y'all do realize this. Trump was calling her out on her lies. Because she cannot. And you are literally fighting tooth and nail. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has one of the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, non-strict deals on abortion. Now, you do have a Jewish um, governor. He has some, I would say, morals about himself. But he believes in women and their reproductive rights. You go to a state like Ohio or Arkansas or Tennessee, the laws might be a little different. But there's never actually been a total ban. This is another lie that Kamala has said. There's never been a abortion ban. And Trump is not going to worry about abortion when he comes into office. He's going to be too, bu too busy dealing with immigration to worry about women and, uh, you know, abortion. It went to the state. It went away from the government, which they have been, you can look it up on Google. Even Democrats tried to fight for years to get it out of the government. Even Hillary. They tried to fight it to get it out of the government and to go back to the states. I mean, you can look it up. You don't have to take my word for it. Bless your heart. I know you're passionate about it, but you can look it up. They wanted it back to the states. And that's what they got. They just didn't realize that so many different states, about 20, would be uh, red states. They thought, oh, it'll be all Democrat. And they all... They, these states are not going to do unlimited abortions. They're just not. And it's nothing that, that, that's... There are countries that actually ban abortion. I mean, full out and out, ban it. The only way you can get one is you need to be dying or the baby dying. That's it. That's the only two. Uh, any other thing. I mean, y'all complain about our country. But I guarantee you, if you went to other countries and had to live with their laws, you would grateful, gratefully be coming back to America and saying, I wish I was in America. The way y'all bitch about this country, and y'all don't realize that y'all live in the most blessed, wonderful country you could possibly live in, and you have freedoms in this country like never before, and you take damn advantage of it, and it's just sad because if you actually went to another country and lived the way some of them people live, you would come screaming back to America. I, I, I just ungrateful people that that live in this country don't realize the benefits and the and the blessings that they have being them you know in America why do you think these people are coming here by the millions why do you think that they they risk life and limb in order to get here for asylum and to live in America if we wasn't the greatest country in the world. Of course, I don't want a man telling me what to do with my body. If I decide that my health is in stake and I'm having heart issues and I'm having things going on, uh, I'm gonna leave in God's hands. I'm going to trust God. That's my choice. 
And if I have the baby and have it healthy, then great. And if I don't, and I die because of it, guess what? It's in God's hands. That's my choice as a woman. And a lot of women do that. There's so many women out there that can have babies, that want to have a baby. And it's like, it's sad. It really is, it's sad you know but what do you do about it but i'm getting a little up to 30 minutes guys i'm fixing to hop off of here it is a glorious thursday really honestly it is it's a nice thursday and like i said we got that refreshing rain coming in and i got vacation coming up soon gonna be staying in the condo and i'm definitely gonna be recording so don't y'all worry I mean, I'm passionate about women and their freedoms, women having freedoms to be able to do just as much as anything that anybody else could do because I happen to be a woman. And I think that women uh, should be able to love their husbands without ch being chastised. If they want to, you know, rub their husband's feet, cook them dinner, stay at home, and be barefoot and pregnant you know and and live the american dream as a housewife and the husband go work and her have a hot meal for her husband and they go to church and raise their kids and uh they do the uh, their own thing then that should be the right as a woman and not be belittled because she happens to love her family and love her husband and their little family unit but liberals will literally attack a woman and a Christian woman. I've seen it in full time on X. Because that woman happened to say, I love my husband. I love my children. I will do anything for my husband. I worship my husband. And I'm just like, that's going a little far. But if you love him that much, hey, honey, if he's doing things for you and rubbing your feet and, you know, paying attention to you and being a love kind loving kind husband to you and you love him for that honey go for it worship the man and she got booted off of twitter when it was twitter i mean they raped her over the coals they terrorized her they found out where she lived and i'm telling you it was bad that's the tolerable left for you though all right, well, good morning. Have a great rest of your day. Leave the comments in below um, what y'all guys think. And if you happen to get offended about what I said, get over it. Um, you know, that's all I can tell you to do. And to that note, I'm going to let y'all go. And see y'all in the next video.